30 verses of one particular surah that is in the Quran that continues to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives and that is nothing but surah mulk one of the most important surahs in the Quran because of the fact that the surah focuses on uh, seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through one important means and that is to demonstrate the power and the might and the magnificence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it creates that awe, that inspiring awe of the massive magnitude of the power of the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is why Allah starts off the surah by talking about Tabarak alladhi bi adihil mulk Glory be to the king, the one who has the dominion of the heavens and the earth and all the power in his hands and ends by talking about the most basic thing that we need in order to survive, which is water. And that's why Allah says, do you see all human beings, if you don't listen to what I've just said in this surah, that if the water that is with you, the water with which you drink and that you are thirsty, but with, without which you will die within a day or two, this water, if someone was to prevent the water from you, who is there other than Allah who can send the water back? This surah, Ya Khuti, was revealed for the most arrogant of sinners. We know we have sinners and all people are sinners. But the best of sinners are the ones who repent. And Jannah and Jahannam were created both for sinners. But Jannah was created for those who sin and then repent. But Jahannam was created for those who sin but don't repent. So Ya Khuti, this surah was revealed for those people who are the most arrogant sinners. Those who think that, you know, I am the greatest. And who is that that can take me to account? And I will never die. And no, I am, I'm the one who has the most money and the wealth. Who is there greater in wealth and money and women and children than me? So this surah is for the most arrogant of the most arrogant of people. So let's learn about this surah, the surah that was revealed in Makkah by the ijma of the scholars of tafsir. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, ar-Rahman, meaning the one who is most merciful to all all beings and all creations are rahim meaning the one who is merciful specifically to the believers tabarak alladhi bi yadihi al mulk wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir tabarak means praise be the one glorified be be, be the one alladhi bi yadihi al mulk the one in whose hands is the dominion meaning in the hands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the total totality of the dominion of the heavens and the earth in the authentic narration is it is reported that when the day of judgment comes, when the blowing of the horn happens, all of the dunya and all of the universe will be folded up in the right hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then at that point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, where are the kings today? I am the king and there is no other king other than me. And for about 40, we don't know what this 40 years, 40,000 years or 40 million years, there will be nothing else in existence except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah will recreate the angel and the angel will, will, re, will blow into the horn. And then, which is a second blowing, and then at that point, uh, the earth of resurrection will be recreated. And he is capable of doing every single thing. The one who has created death and al-hayat, which is life. لِيَبُلُوَكُمْ In order to test you, أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Who amongst you is best in deeds? The scholars of Tafsir mention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says He created death, then He created life. Why did He do this? In order to لِيَبُلُوَكُمْ The purpose of all of this is a test, Ya Khuti. And the purpose of a test is to know whether we will succeed or not. How long is the test for? Approximately three to four hours compared to a lifetime. That is how long this life is compared to the Akhirah Day of Judgment. That with this test of three or four hours, we're going to earn an, an eternity in Jannah or an eternity in Jahannam. وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْغَفُورُ Al-Aziz meaning the most honored. Al-Ghafoor, the one who loves to forgive. So the scholars of Islam say when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts two of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together, what does it mean? When He forgives, He forgives in a massive way. Until when you see the forgiveness of Allah, you are baffled. How can Allah forgive so much? And, you, and you, have, you see honor in His forgiveness. And you see forgiveness in His honor. The one who has created the seven heavens, one above the other. So this is the earth. Above the earth is the heaven of this dunya, which is the first sky. Above this are the seven skies. Each sky or each heaven as large as this universe. 
So seven universes, you might say, above this, above this universe or our sky, seven others above it. Then after this comes Jannah. Each level of Jannah, like the space of the heavens and the earth and the universes. Above it is water. And above the water are the angels. Above the angels are the, are the other angels that carry the throne of Allah. And above the throne is Allah established in a manner befitting His Majesty. And this is the way the scholars have described how everything is above us. The one who has created seven heavens above all of us, lofty, structured on top of each other. You do not see in the creation of Allah, tafawut. What's tafawut mean? Any deficiency. No deficiency can you see in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Farji' al-basara. So return your eyesight back to that thing that you're looking, which is the sky. Farji' al-basara. Hal tara min futur? Can you see any problems, any breakage, any tearing? Thumma rji' al-basara. Then return your eyesight again. Karrataini. Meaning, again and after again. Meaning, keep on looking again and again. Yan qalib ilayka al-basaru khasi wa huwa hasir. Your eyesight will turn back to you confused. Meaning, I can't see anything. No deficiency. Wa huwa hasir. Meaning, tired. Completely tired, fatigued, and confused. Meaning that you will not be able to find a single deficiency in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the sky not only for the purposes that you know of, which is to provide protection for this earth and for life, but also for two other purposes. Number one is to create a beautification for the earth. وَلَقَدْ زَيَّنَّ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَصَابِيحَ And we have beautified the heavens with the masabih, with the lanterns, which is the stars. How mighty is Allah, that Allah didn't need to create the stars for anything except beauty. وَجَعَلْنَاهَا رُجُومًا لِشَيَاطِينَ And we have made it a rujum, meaning something that is thrown at the shayateen. So are we saying that the stars are thrown at the shayateen? No, that's not what Allah is saying. Allah is saying that because they are lanterns, the light of the stars is what is thrown at the, at the shayateen. And what we know today is that the meteors that come out of the stars, that is what Allah is referring to over here. وَأَعْتَدْنَا لَهُمْ عَذَابَ السَّعِيرِ And we are prepared for the shayateen, عذاب السَّعِيرِ At this point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts talking about that conversation that will take place between the two people, right? And He talks about the situation at that simple point when uh, all the people that are going to go to Jahannam are being tied up. At that point, it is reported that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will get very angry. And it is in that point, at that point, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, throw them into Jahannam. So the angels will say, Ya Rab, how many? And Allah will say, 999 out of every thousand. Ya Salam. It is at that point that the Surah Mulk will stand up and say, Oh Allah, save him from, from that. It is at that point that your charity will argue with Allah. It is at that point that if you have a son or a daughter that has died, because you had a miscarriage, for example, sisters in Islam, if you're listening, وَلِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ عَذَابُ جَهَنَّمْ وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ And for those who have disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and are too arrogant to repent to Allah azza wa jal, عَذَابُ جَهَنَّمْ وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ And what a terrible destination it is. إِذَا أُلْقُوا فِيهَا When they are being thrown into it, سَمِعُوا لَهَا شَهِيقًا there will be a huge roar that comes out of the fire. Until it is blazing in its, in its flames. Meaning, as they're being thrown into it, huge sound will come out of it and the huge fire will go outside of Jahannam and burn outside. Until the fire is burning with rage. You can barely make out the roar of the fire from the scream of the people. Meaning, you don't know which one is louder. Kullama ulqiya fiha. Every single time something is thrown into it, what is thrown into it? Fawjud, meaning a group is thrown into it. You will be thrown in with the people that you imitated and that you were raised up with. Who did you imitate in this dunya? Who did you want to be? Everyone will be with the ones that they loved in this dunya. Kullama ulqiya fiha fawjun sa'alahum khazanatuha. The khazana meaning the ones who are guarding the jahannam. Sa'alahum will ask them, Alam yatikum nadir, did not a warner come to you? 
Did not someone come to you, a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tell you to fear Allah and to be wary of this day? They said, yes, absolutely they did. A warner did come to us. We disbelieved in him, meaning we lied against him. And we said, Allah has not revealed anything at all. In antum illa fi dalalin kabir. Verily, O oh, you messengers, you are nothing but transgression and you are nothing but misguidance. You are a misguided bunch. وَقَالُوا لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُوا And then they continued and they said, If only we heard, or we even pondered, we didn't even hear, but we simply pondered in our hearts about the greatness of Allah and about the signs Allah has given us. مَا كُنَّا فِي أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ We would not be from the people of Jahannam. It is a lack of pondering, it is a lack of thinking about our ultimate future that causes us to enter Jahannam. فَاعْتَرَفُوا بِذَنْبِهِمْ So they acknowledged their sin. فَصُحْقًا لِأَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ سُحْقًا meaning get away from me, get away from me. Meaning away, away, let the people of Jahannam be away from me. Meaning away from my, my mercy. Because Allah knows that if you were to be brought back in this dunya, you would you'd behave in the same way. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَأَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ Those who believe in their Lord, without having witnessed him bil ghaib from an unseen place lahum maghfira wa ajrun kabir to them is allah's maghfira allah's forgiveness and for them is a great reward thereafter allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inspiring you and i to something very simple to seek out allah's mercy lahum maghfira the first step of you gaining salvation is that you are worthy of Allah forgiving you. Following that, ajrun kabir, you get a bigger reward thereafter, and nothing is greater than being given access to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, but there's an, a, an occasion in Jannah where the people congregate. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala approaches them and says to the people in Jannah, this is the day of increase. Do any of you want anything? And you and I will say, bi'iznillah, you will say, Ya Rabb, you brightened our face and you forgave for us our sins and you allowed us to enter this Jannah. What more can we ask for? And at that moment, Allah would remove his veil from them. No human being, no one in Jannah has been given anything more blessed, more beautiful, then to look through the face of their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the day of increase. So reward is for the righteous who have humility before their Lord, who believe in him in a way where they haven't seen him, they haven't seen the Prophet Allah then says, whether you hold what you want to say or you say it out loud, I know everything in, in you. And part of our legal mechanisms, if someone is speaking in public loud enough for someone to hear it, if you transmit it to others, it's not stealing the word and you betrayed the secret. You shouldn't have been speaking so loud, brother. Number two is a sirr. Sirr is secret where you exclude everyone except a few. If he is then to go and tell people, it means he has sinned before Allah. Allah knows what is in the heart. There are certain things I don't say out loud and I won't even say to someone secretly. I keep it inside myself. Then there's a fourth, which is what I don't know that I want to keep secret yet. And Allah knows that. Allah knows what you have not yet spoken or decided to share with others or not. إِنَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاتِ الصُّدُورِ What is in the chest? You, you know that pain, it's, it's felt, it's sensed. It made my chest seize. You know, I couldn't breathe. Uh, my chest is tight, brother. I'm angry, brother, right? So Allah knows what brings that and what releases it. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ala ya'lamu man khalaq. Why does he know all of this? Should not and does not the one who has created know what is best for his creation? Don't you now come to this recognition that the one who put everything in place and knew this little speck in it, 
do you not now come to your senses to assume that he knows what is best for you? That he is Al-Latif Al-Khabir. And those are two of the uh, beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Latif is subtle and it is kind. His knowledge is after the subtleness of him leading you to it. So if you trust Allah's kindness to you and you have humility to him, he will treat you with that kindness that will surprise you. Allah then says, listen, I want you to know how I'm latif to you. I've made the earth subservient to you. I've given you the birds and the bees and the trees and the honey and the water and the rain. I've given you love and contentment with each other. I build for you a system of life on this earth that is in perfect balance. That if you change just a few degrees, you will ruin it. Don't ruin the earth after I've made it perfect for you. The lulan. Enjoy it. Walk all of its path. Climb its highest mountains. Dive its darkest seas. Go everywhere in it. And you will recognize that I have made it in service to you. And eat from his rizq. Everything you will take from it is provided to you as a provision by Allah. On the one condition that you remember you will be questioned about it and its use when you, when I bring you back to ask you. Do you feel secure after you've looked up into the heavens? The one who created all these heavens, the one who did all of that which you see, are you not afraid of him? Do you feel security that you will not be punished by the one who has created everything around you? Or do you feel secure by the one who is with him all authority that he would not send against you the strong wind that can hurl stones and rocks against you? Why were these verses revealed? Well, the people of Mecca, they defied the Prophet At the head of them were three. Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayt, Umayya ibn Khalaf, Abu al-Hakam ibn Hisham, uh, which is Abu Jahl. The three of them, they stood in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they gave him a title where they changed his name from Muhammad, the praised one, to Mudhammam, the humiliated one. And they would ridicule him because in these moments his sons had died. So they would ridicule him that you are cursed, every son you have is being cursed. And they would say, do something about it. Send the wind, bring it. And then they started laughing at our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So Allah says, I'm not going to punish them because of your blessed presence amongst them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And therefore Allah in these verses, he's saying, do you feel that your protection and that which you have made as a structure in your life and the denial that you have done, that that will save you from me. In fact, what Allah demands of us, أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا إِلَى الطَّيْرِ Let me give you your example in the birds. Who causes the birds to fly such great distances? Allah says, مَا يُمْسِكُهُنَّ No one carries them إِلَّا Rahman Except for Allah. Some of you are thinking, but it's the air that carries them. Yeah, perhaps. Allah is talking about the fact that there's, there's migra migratory birds. Have you heard of them? Birds that migrate from the south to the north. They travel thousands, 10,000 kilometers not to stop except until they reach the destination. So think about it. Ma illa rahman. Who holds them up except for, for Allah? Innahu bi kulli shay'in basir. Verily. He is always ever seeing every single thing. He's always watching and always watchful over every single thing. Or is there any other army that will help you with other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Inil kafiruna illa fi ghurur. Verily, the disbelievers are in nothing but ghurur, meaning confusion. 
Amman hadha alladhi yarzukukum in amsaka rizqa Is there anyone who will provide for you if he were to withhold his provision from you? Balladju fi u'tu wi wa nufur Rather they continue in their u'tu U'tu means that they turn away and they reject So they continue in their rejection Wa nufur and the perversion So they are perverting it and they are rejecting it Afama yamshi mukibban ala wajihi Is the one who walks or flat on his face Mukibban ala wajihi ahda More guided Amma yamshi sawi And all the one who walks straight Ala sirat al-mustaqeen Straight upon the path Qul huwa alladhi ansha'akum Say he is the one who has truly created you the very first time Wa ja'alak lakum sam'a and he has created for you a sam' which is hearing, wal absar and eyesight, wal afida and hearts. Holy lama tashkurun. How little it is that you thank him. So if you want to thank Allah, you can't just say, "Oh, Allah, thank you." No, that's how you thank a human being. Thanking Allah means doing a good deed. Qul huwa alladhi dara'akum fil ardi. Say he is the one who has created you on this earth. Wa ilayhi tuhsharun, and to him will be your return. So why don't you thank Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? وَيَقُولُونَ And they say in haughtiness and pride, مَتَى هَذَا الْوَعْدُ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ When will this hour come if indeed you're truthful? قُلْ إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ Verily the knowledge and Allah is with Allah. وَإِنَّمَا أَنَا And I am nothing but نَذِيرٌ مُبِينٌ And I'm nothing but a manifest warner. فَلَمَّا رَأَوْهَا زُلْفَةً And know this, O human beings, that when they will see Jahannam Zulfa, meaning drawing near, because Jahannam will be drawn by uh, on 70,000 rings, each ring having 70,000 angels. See at wujuhu alladheena kafaru. The faces of those who disbelieved will be full of blackness, darkness, worry, concern, and uh, fear. And it will be said to them, meaning the angels who are guarding them and make, making sure they don't run away, will be saying to them, هَذَا الَّذِي كُنْتُمْ تَدْدَعُونَ This is the jahannam you were asking for. Because a lot of the kuffar do that today, right? Oh. Yeah, Muhammad, if it's truly true, truly the case that this Quran is right, why doesn't God punish me now? Have you heard those sort of people? They are the worst, the most arrogant of them, right? So they are the ones who Allah is referring to here. And it will, they will say, kuntum bihi This is what you used to ask for. Kul say, O Muhammad وسلم, to this arrogant people, in Allahu, if Allah was to destroy me, meaning give me death. وَمَنْ مَعِيَ And those with me. أَوْ رَحِمَنَا Or to have mercy on me. فَمَنْ يُجِيرُ الْكَافِرِينَ Who will save the kafirin, the disbelievers? مِنْ عَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ From the terrible fire. قُلْ هُوَ الرَّحْمَانِ Say he is a rahman He is the one who loves to forgive. عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْنَا I believe in him. وَعَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْنَا And upon him I put my trust. فَسَتَعْلَمُونَ مَنْ هُوَ فِي ضَلَالِ مُبِينَ Meaning, say back to the disbelievers and these people who are haughty and proud. Verily, soon enough, you will get to know who is the one who is in manifest, manifest error. Who is the one who is completely misguided. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finishes up the surah by talking about water. And the most needy thing to create that urgency for us to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qul ara'aytum. Say, will you see? In asbaha ma'ukum ghawra. If asbaha meaning if your water was to become asbaha, to become unpalatable, salty, undrinkable, unusable, yeah? فَمَنْ يَأْتِيكُمْ Who will come with ma in ma'i? Who will give you water to drink? Subhanallah. Sayyid Bhati, this is Surah Bulk, one of the most powerful surahs in the Quran.